Welcome back. If you were in Salt Lake City in 1983, there's no doubt you remember exactly where you were that Memorial Day. We're talking about the anniversary of the State Street River flood. Well, I guess you call it the State Street River. Craig Worth putting together another story about one of Salt Lake's greatest events. Hi, Craig. Howdy, and even if you were not here, or maybe you weren't anywhere yet 37 years ago, oh, what a story. So gather around the old campfire and listen to the tale of the mighty State Street River. This is State Street at 3rd South today. This was State Street at 3rd South 37 years ago. Yeah, a bit different. People talk about the flood of 1983 pretty much every spring when the snow melts. You see, we had record amounts of snow in the winter of 82-83. Try 700 inches at Parley Summit versus a norm of about 300 inches. And a really cold May. That is until the last week of May when it hit 90 degrees. At first they thought they could hold it all at Mountain Dell in Parley's Canyon. It didn't work. The water came. Manholes became geysers. Water came down 13th South out of Parley's Canyon. It gushed through Memory Grove, tearing out a new channel. Things didn't look too good. People had about a day to save the town. And it all amounted to an equivalent of an old barn raising. Thousands turned out to sandbag the city. For the first time, even churches were canceled on May 29th. It was no picnic on the holiday weekend. A million sandbags, yes, a million sandbags were stuffed with sand. Plastic riverbeds made a new roaring river. There was a human chain. Sandbags went from the big sand pile down the street and into the river. Well, by about the second day, we knew this was a big deal. Why? Because they were already selling t-shirts. I am a Salt Lake City sandbagger and the spirit of 83. And of course, the souvenir of the decade, water from the flood. Oh, it had a warning, do not drink. Now, what's wrong with drinking opaque, dirty flood water from City Creek that was turning the city into a creek? The masses and sandbags had moved on to State Street. People worked day and night and made a new river, the State Street River. The new river would run from Memory Grove all the way to about Dirks Field. It was quite a river. It even had rapids. People had a sense of humor about it all. One claimed to have caught a fish in it. Hmm, well, there is the guy and the fish. We don't know if fishing without a license on State Street is as bad as driving without a license on State Street. But it wasn't just a river. In one day, bridges were built over the mighty State Street River. Some for cars, some for people. And like any good river, it became a destination tourist site. It just seemed very strange. A river roaring down the street. Kind of a combination downtown river walk and Venetian style canal. And life went on around it and over it. About the worst thing about the State Street River was this. The sandbags blocked the old center theater. Well, that meant Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, had to go to a theater on dry ground. Well, that was big news then. The city spent about $150,000 a day to keep the river flowing, and it did. And then it was time to take it all apart and drain the mighty State Street River. 13 days later, all was done, and the city picked up its million soggy sandbags and tore out the $30,000 bridges that were put up in just one day. The city hosed down the street, and all of this became a memory to talk about every spring. Now I tell you, you guys missed one of the most defining moments in Salt Lake City history when just about everyone pitched in and saved the city. Now tomorrow, when we have this on our ABC4 Facebook page, I'd love to hear from all of you about your stories and your memories of 
the State Street River. Craig, we would uh, not want to have anyone else help narrate this amazing part of Utah history. You've seen the Berlin Wall fall. You've been all over the world. Where does this rank for you in, as far oh, well, as some the of the State historic Street moments? River. You know, okay, it was pretty substantial. It was amazing. But you know, really what was amazing is the way the entire town came out. And in those days, we didn't have social distancing, <laughs> believe me. And shoulder to shoulder, put out the sandbags and save the town. That was really what was exciting.